Uh, my staff had some feedback that uh, we ran into some glitches when you have an established niche that you've analyzed. And then over time, things dynamically always change and you want to, and you see new competitors, new, new keyword possibilities, et cetera. Uh, you don't want to have like the same niche repeated over and over and over that you keep rerunning. It seems like you'd want to just add into the tray new ASINs. But when we do that, we get an error. Is there something we're not doing properly? Like, let's say you have an established niche and you see five new competitors that are outranking you and you figure, okay, there's keywords you want to explore. What do you do? So you have an existing niche and you want to add new competitors to that niche and you're getting an error? Correct. Yeah, I can definitely show you how to do that. This is something that I've actually been explaining incorrectly until Ed pulled me aside and he was actually showing me how to do it correctly. So I'll show everyone here on this call. It's pretty oh, easy to do once you know so, how to so do it. So I, I learned it from you. <laughs> yeah, so I'll show you the wrong way and then I'll show you the right way. Because one way definitely doesn't work. There's only one way that works. What I used to tell people is that if you wanted to re-dive a niche, uh, you could just click this dive again button. Well, that, that actually does work. But if you wanted to add competitors to, to a dive, that all you had to do is go to Amazon. And then I'm going to type in sneaker cleaner. And then it should already pull up what I have in my tray. You can see here's everything that's added to my tray. But let's say I'm going to go to the bottom and just, okay, let's say that T and C, I want to add this product to my dive. And then I want to add, let's just grab another one. I want to add this product, Q-U-F-Y. And what I used to tell people is you just open up the data dive extension. Uh, let me clear my tray first. Because these wouldn't be here if you were doing other dives. So. What was it again? It was T and C, and then we went down one other one. And then we said this one, Q-U-F-Y. So we used to, I, what I used to tell people, and this is definitely wrong, so don't do this, is I used to say, okay, you want to add these two products to your, to your niche. What you do is you click on this sneaker cleaner kit, you add these two ASINs, and you click dive. That is not going to work. What it's going to do is it's going to make a new dive with only these two ASINs. The correct way to do it is you come to your niche tracker and you see all these ASINs here. I'm going to copy all of them and I'm going to click Control C. And then I'm going to go back over to Data Dive. The correct way to do it is see here where it has this ASIN tray? Yep. You paste all of these ASINs in and you click Add. So now it's bringing in all of the original ASINs and the new ones. See, and then now these are at the bottom. So now if I select the sneaker cleaning niche, you're going to see I have 23 ASINs that are already in the niche, plus these two new ones. And then when I click dive, then that's going to allow me to actually bring those two into the existing research. That's the only way to do it, right? So you have to copy the ASINs, paste them in, and then after that, you add in the extra, select the same niche. And then if I would click dive again, uh, another set of research is going to pop up. Awesome. And, and that's what we were missing. We were doing exactly what you did right up to this step and only adding the two. So cool. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that wrong too. We, we can send a shout out to Ed for that. Anything else we can help you with? No, no, that's it. There was this, uh, this little glitch here, which is uh, cool. Thanks so much for clearing that up. Hey, we got a question here from Michael, and that's how accurate are the 30-day sales on Data Dive? Let's see if we can take a look and see. So I think what you're talking about is in... in the master keyword list. Maybe we clarify that. I'm not sure if you're saying uh, how accurate are these sales numbers or are we talking about the charts here that are showing up for sales data? I think this is, let's see. Uh, yeah, this goes way far back. So this is, I don't think this is what you're talking about. Let's see. Correct, okay. Um, Let's see, Ed, Moises, do you guys have any feedback on that in terms of, I'm, I'm actually not sure off the top of my head if these are estimations that are pulled from Jungle Scout or if these are real true life numbers. I don't know if either of you can hop in and, and speak to that for Michael's question. Hey there. Yep. Yeah, so basically uh, these are estimations uh, we get from the Jungle Scout data, right, for the last 30 days. Uh, if you have uh, any specific scenario where you have, like, your data 
right? And compared to what is showing up, uh, we will we will really like to to take a look deeper into that, right? So so we can uh, check in further and try to replicate, right? Uh, you can write us to uh, support at datadive.tools, right? With details about like, this is my ASIN, this is what I, I have, and this is what it's showing, right? Just in case it, it is not matching, but yes, definitely uh, these are estimations we get from Jungle Scout. Rich is asking, hello, I have lead times that are longer than six weeks. Any chance the calculator can be updated to go up to 10 or 12 weeks? Yeah, let me take a look at that. So let's see what the highest is here. I think that sounds like a pretty easy thing to do. Yeah, so the highest is six weeks. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what the, the feasibility of that is, but uh, Ed and Moises are both here. I don't know if it's possible to make that calculator go higher for people who have lead times longer than six weeks, but feedback has been noted. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll follow up there. Okay, Rob is asking, in bullets, I am under the assumption that the character limit is 200 x 5 bullets 1,000. Is that correct? I see some competitors that exceed, and it still works in those listings. Those that have more keywords by having more characters score higher in data dive. Any thoughts on this? Yeah, I think in some categories, you might actually be able to push the character limit or maybe you know, they actually let you put more in. The Here's the thing with any of the keyword ranking, right? It's going to prioritize the characters that are there first. So if we're saying that the character limit is 200, if that's what we're showing in data dive, I would try to like focus on the, the first part of that. If you can make it longer, um, it's not going to have that much of an impact, I think. The other thing too is to keep in mind is that there's different weights for each portion of the listing, right? So title is going to be your highest weight followed by bullet points. And then search term subject matter, A plus is going to be, A plus in description is going to probably be the lowest weight. So, you know, you want to try to make the title changes. That's going to be your big priority of putting those exact keywords in. Bullets are still super, super important and uh, to cover some of those other keywords. But, um, I, you know, I would just try to, if we're saying that the, the limit is a thousand characters, I'd try to stick with that. I don't, you know, I, I would just try to try to fit within that range. All right. We got another question here from Osme. Uh, product scorecard in talking about the distribution of root search volume top two roots, how to actually identify it. Hover around mine shows 0.55 implied that the answer will be more than 90%, a minus 100, but my root three and four are 0.4 and 0.4. How should I interpret it? Do you mind to explain? Yeah, so I can go through that. So what's being asked right now is to answer this question on the product scorecard. It's asking the distribution of search volume in the top two routes. What it's trying to do is get a sense of how much search volume is taken up by the top two routes. So the, I want to make sure I'm explaining this right, but what Florin, our CTO, the, the way I, from, from what I follow, how he explained it to me, is you go to the routes tab. If you can't see the bar on the right-hand side, oops, that's not right. Uh, if you can't see the bar on the right-hand side, you just got to sometimes minimize a little bit so that you can see it because I'm on a, on a really narrow screen. And then so if I'm looking at my top two routes for this, I've got shoe cleaner and I've got, uh, I'm going to go shoe cleaner and shoe cleaner kit. Right, so cleaner is not going to, right, this is one shoe that's too general. So this would be like 0.8, and then this is going to be 0.2. What that means is that all of the search volume is encapsulated in these keywords, right? There is a very, very low, like I could come all the way down here and I could see, see how leather shoe cleaner is still shoe cleaner. I, I would be very hard pressed like to find anything else here that is not including the keyword shoe cleaner, right? Shoe cleaner is already making up 0.8. And then only after we add on kit, like sneaker kit, this is an example, point two, between these keywords, like shoe cleaner, shoe cleaner kit, sneaker kit, it's all the same thing, right? 100% of the search volume is coming from these keywords. So I think I'd have to see the exact example with what exactly you're showing. But yes, that is what that's telling me is that there's not that many ways to call a shoe cleaner kit, right? You can say it's like a shoe cleaner kit for Jordans. You can say it's a shoe cleaner kit for Yeezys, Adidas but it's still a shoe cleaner. It's still a shoe cleaner kit. 
It's still a shoe cleaner kit for leather, for suede, for canvas, for, you know, for Uggs, whatever the, the thing is, it's all based on that root of shoe cleaner and shoe cleaner kit. So I think your analysis is probably correct, right? And I think your score that you've assigned yourself is probably correct. Um, I hope I'm explaining that. I hope that's clear, but yes, right? What this is telling me is that out of there, all of these roots, I don't see anything here that is a root that's not related to that. And if it is, it's a very, very tiny percentage, right? Everything is encapsulated in this core root of shoe cleaner or shoe cleaner kit. I think your analysis is correct. All right, that was a good question. I Sometimes I get confused on that as well, right? But that's the whole point of this. It's like you're looking at, there might be 20 different ways people are searching for a product. A garlic press is a really good example of this. People call it a gar garlic press, garlic mincer, garlic peeler, garlic slicer, rocker, right? But garlic press and keywords related to garlic press with those keywords in there, garlic press and I think mincer, it's like 99% of the search volume. So yes, people do search for a garlic press in 20 different ways. But the reality is they're getting a very, very small search volume relative to the entire niche. Oh, okay, niche pipeline. Can we rename the hero keyword to be the same as the niche name? So let's go to our niche pipeline. Remember the niche pipeline, this is a historical record of all of the diving activity that you've done on your account, right? So this is a really great way to kind of look at everything you've done. You can see from mine, I have like hundreds of dives that I've done. And so what's being asked right now is about renaming the hero keyword. Right now, you don't have the ability to do that, right? You can rename your niche. Really important too is that when you're starting your dive that you make your niche name only your hero keyword, it's going to make sure that the Google search data, the Google trends data gets imported correctly. I can rename it to whatever I want after, but you have to use just the hero keyword. Right now, there's no option to rename the hero keyword based on my understanding. If you're diving from the ASIN tray, it's going to give you this long string of basically ASINs. What I recommend doing is you can see here on the far right-hand side, there's this columns. I like to just remove the hero keyword because I don't use it, right? And from what I understand, it's not customizable. You can customize your entire view for what shows up in the columns by going to this column tab. You might find yourself only, you know, I'm only selling in Amazon US, so I don't need to see any other marketplaces. Right, You can just decide for yourself what you want to show up. This niche pipeline, you should make this very customizable for you and for your organization. Good question there, though. I don't, I don't think you can rename the hero keyword. Hamza is also saying something. Hey, Anthony, I'm getting very different amounts of numbers every time I do a dive on same competitors. What can be the issue? Because it's hard for us to chank ranking juice as it changes every time. Okay, I'm here. Okay, Lynn, yeah, what, can you tell us a little bit about uh, what steps you took? Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Okay, so um, we actually bought an Amazon business, and okay. it, it um, looking at the listings, we went in and made some changes. Um, it, I don't think it was ranking to begin with, and then making the changes, it still is not doing great. So we're looking at maybe doing the, I think it's a hack that is the variation that, that that's kind of like a, um, a relaunch. Yep. So that's where we are. Uh, that's been Gosh, my experience it. so far. And when you bought the business, how long had that business been around for before you purchased it? Um, several years and it was doing well pre-pandemic and then it wasn't. Um, and so, I mean, we got a really good deal on it and we bought it just to have the brand and to grow it ourselves. So we knew that that's what we were, you know, going to do. It's just that this is my, our first experience with this. Gotcha. And when you talk about uh, the rank, you know, you tried to do some title changes or you tried to make some listing changes. Uh, were you able to check the rank before and after? Like, has there been even a small increase or even new keywords that you're getting indexed for that you weren't indexed for in the past? Has there been any increase or is it all exactly the same, no change at all? You know, I wasn't able to um, do a before changes, but I do know that one of them that we are ranking for, and when I say we're not ranking, there's like five or six that are like ranked at like 93 and 90s, it's in the 90s. But the one 
um, keyword that I did add to the title that was not previously there was in that list. So it did something. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it sounds. It's yeah. It sounds like you've got a pretty good. It sounds like you've got a pretty good strategy. The the reality is like how the Amazon algorithm works. It's all based on performance, right? So there's three uh, key components of that. There's going to be click through rate, right? That's how many what percentage of people are clicking into your listing. You've got conversion rate, what percentage of people are buying, and then revenue, right? So that's like what's the total amount of sales and what Amazon is looking at is they're looking at over time who is going to have out of all of these people who's going to have the highest conversion rate the highest click through rate and the highest uh, revenue rate and they're going to use that to decide okay who deserves to be first second third simple explanation but as you can imagine if you've had years and years and years of historical performance where there's numbers were low it's going to take potentially you know I don't want to say years and years but you're going to have to go and kind of work back up to get there and so what you're suggesting is you know hey maybe we relaunch this we started as a variation. The cool thing is when you relaunch a product, you get that honeymoon period, right? So for the first 30 days, you don't have to overcome all of this previous performance, right? Amazon is going to say, ooh, this is a new product, right? So if I'm selling a sneaker cleaner, it's going to say, okay, we've got this new sneaker cleaner. We know there's all of these other products that have great uh, metrics for a sneaker cleaner, but we've got this new product and we're going to give this new product a shot. And if in the first 30 days, the click-through rate, the conversion rate, the revenue is similar or in line with these other people, rather than taking months or years to get to the same level that everyone else got to, that can help in a lot faster. So the only advice that I would give you is when you go to actually relaunch the product, if you decide to go that route, that make sure you set yourself up for success from the beginning to make sure you're going to get the highest click-through rate possible during that honeymoon period. So that's going to come down to having a good main image ideally having a good price. Your reviews are going to be nothing in the beginning, right? Maybe you're going to do like a Vine program or try to get some reviews. Um, but then aside from getting a high click-through rate, you're going to want to have a high conversion rate as well. So make sure you spend some time. I don't know what the listing looks like right now. You can tell us uh, your confidence. Do you think the image or the A plus is good? But make sure that you have that stuff ready to go from the beginning when you launch so that it can convert as high as possible. Okay, so main image price, don't worry about reviews right now. Um, I would guess advertising is part of all this. That's going to help. Yeah, make sure to like, I'll, I'll show real quick, right? So if I, I've been working on this sneaker cleaner example, I hope no one's selling this because I know it was suggested for office hours uh, in one of the other ones, but this has been a really good product to do a dive on. But like, if for example, I was relaunching this product, right? I would make sure that okay, from a, you know, from a click-through rate standpoint, I want to make sure that my main image is good. So if I'm looking at all of these other competitors, I'm thinking about what's going to be a main image that's going to click, right? When someone sees it, they're going to understand what I'm selling, even without having to look at the title, something, that bold, something that's bold and something that stands out, right? So you can see this image here, it's showing the product, it's showing the brush on the side. It's a real bright color. We got this pink. This is beautiful packaging. Like these main images all look very good. If I go further down this list, right, you're probably going to find the people that aren't performing so well. Um, you know, main images are a little bit more basic. The other thing I want to do is I want to look at the image galleries, right? The people who are in red, I want to look at their image gallery and ask myself, what are they doing that's allowing them to convert, right? Your image gallery is supposed to convince someone that they've found the correct product that they're looking for. They've found the sneaker cleaner and now they're going to add it to their cart, right? So you can see here, this is talking about how fast it works. Start to put these into groups, right? Of like, you can, if I would go through these images and I would say, okay, out of all the images in this entire niche, what are the most common types of graphics that people have, right? This is like how to use, right? This is how long it takes. This is like a before and after. And after you look through these, you're going to start to see trends. So make sure that whatever the top performers have in your niche, you're probably having similar type graphics. You want them to be more effective. You want them to be like easier to understand, better looking, but you want to cover your bases and make sure they're all there. So click through and conversion is what I really try to focus on. Make sure you have as good images as possible. Does the current listing also have A+. plus? It does, but the images need to be redone for sure. Right. So before you launch, right, you've already bought this business, you've invested. I would probably think about spending like, you know, a thousand to two thousand dollars if you can if you can swing it um, 
I don't know what the product is, but either like professional photography shoot or 3D renders, you want to give something that when you, you only, I used to say when I had my agency, everyone knows YOLO, but instead of you only live once, you only launch once, right? So you really want to get this right so that when you pull the trigger and you relaunch that product, you don't waste that honeymoon period because Amazon is going to say, hey, you're launching a sneaker cleaner. We're going to see, can you perform better? Can you have a higher click-through rate, higher conversion rate, and more sales than these other sellers? And if you do, you're going to skyrocket up those rankings very quick. The other thing that you want to make sure that you do, really important, is you want your title and your listing to be correct from the beginning. Because this is going to tell Amazon that, hey, when you launch this product, now you're going to be able to build keyword rankings for all of these, uh, all of these keywords. And so the fastest way to do that is to click this optimize ranking juice button. I'm going to change this back to 60%. I'm going to click confirm. And then this is going to automatically, if I go to my roots usage, this is just going to automatically fill out my title with uh, high root keywords, um, high search volume keywords and high ranking juice. And then it's going to spread it out through the listing. I wouldn't upload this exact title into Amazon, but the reason it only fills 60% of the characters is because now I can put some extra things in here to make it a little bit more readable. Um, but make sure that your title is right as well from the beginning. And I know that was a bunch of unsolicited advice, but I, I hope that's helpful and uh, good luck on your relaunch. Oh, that, that was awesome. Thank you. Cool. Uh, okay, let's see. I think we've maybe got a couple more things here and then we're going to wrap up. I've been using Profits Calculator as part of the research. I think it's a great tool. That's awesome feedback, Rich. We're going to hopefully make it even better over time and ideally more automated. I think there's going to come a point where, right, all of this information is ultimately on Amazon. It's in Data Dive already. We can pull it from different spots on the web. I think it's just a matter of time before we're going to, it's going to start to fill out a lot of this stuff for you. All right. That's where we're going to wrap it up, everyone. Thanks so much. Look forward to the new videos. We'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone.